Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to start looking at the subject of resistance and resistivity. So we're particularly interested in resistance as electricians because when we're designing circuits or installing them, extending them or testing them, we have a very important vested interest in checking the resistance of the conductors, specifically what we refer to as the R1 plus R2 measurement. Now, R1 uh, means the resistance of the line conductor, and R2 means the resistance of the CPC. Now, if you are interested in that term, if you want to learn a little bit more about it, please hop over to our partner channel, GSH Electrical, and they'll be able to give you a little bit more information on what that means and how we apply it in the real world. So, we're going to bring the camera in, we're going to look at our drums of cable, and we're going to have a think about resistance and resistivity. So let's have a little think about what we're doing in this experiment. I've got here a drum of cable that I've just got out of the stores. So it's a typical drum of cable that you'd be using on site, generally speaking for lighting circuits. It's a twin and CPC cable uh, that is one millimeter squared in cross-sectional area. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna use this specific drum. We've got a similar drum that we've modified a little bit. We've taken one end off this drum of cable and those of you who are site electricians will know this is an electrician's worst nightmare when the end comes off your cable drum and you're trying to install a circuit off it it's awful but what we're going to do here is we're going to use this to have a think about what we mean by uh, resistance and resistivity and what happens when we change certain factors about the cable now in previous videos when we were looking at uh, very uh, scientific experiments with resistors in series and uh, resistors in parallel we were using a multimeter now the multimeter will not give us a precise enough reading of resistance that we need to get from doing this experiment. So we're gonna put our multimeter to one side and instead of that, we're going to bring in our multifunction tester. Now again, this will be a very familiar site. If you're a site electrician, you'll be using these all the time. Uh, so we've got this already set to measure ohms and this will give us a slightly more accurate reading than the multimeter, it would be able to give us a, a, a more accurate, smaller measurement of resistance. So we'll just plug in the leads and get this set up so that it's ready to carry out the test that we want it to do. So we've got that ready to go. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the resistance of this cable. Now, this is a 100 meters of cable, uh, give or take. So this is a 100 meter drum of cable. That's how much we've got there. Remember, it's one millimeter squared. So we're gonna measure the resistance of the cable but first of all, we're just gonna check the resistance of our leads. So you can see there that internally within the meter and with the uh, leads here, we've got a little bit of a resistance there. So we've got somewhere in the region of 0.03 of an ohm. So if we just zero this now, we can see there that that's now measuring a zero ohm. So we'll get a nice accurate reading. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna clip onto one end of the cable here. So this is the line conductor, the brown, and we're gonna measure the resistance all the way through the drum of cable and figure out what its total resistance is of that one mil, 100 meters of line conductor. Now that's 1.78 ohms. That's a really nice reading. Uh, as we explain resistivity, uh, you'll understand why, but we've got 1.78 ohms. So try and remember that number, 1.78. What we're gonna do now is we're going to change what we're measuring a little bit. So. On the outside of the cable here, we're going to join together the line conductor and the neutral conductor. So we're joining those together at this end. So we've joined those together at this end with a connector block, so they're securely fastened together. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to measure the resistance from the line conductor to the neutral conductor. So what we're measuring now is the resistance of the line conductor all the way through the drum to this point, and then back again on the neutral through the 100 meters. So let's have a look at what reading we get now. So you can see there we've got 3.6 of an ohm, 3.6 of an ohm. Now, hopefully your maths is strong enough that you can see that there's a bit of a relationship between the original number we had, 1.78 ohms, and this number that we've got now, 
3.6 ohms. And you should be able to tell that 3.6 is just about double 1.78. Okay, so we've about doubled the resistance. So you can see very clearly, there's a clear relationship there. What we've done is we've actually, we've doubled the length of the conductor that we're measuring, and it has also doubled its resistance. So if we double the length of a conductor, we double its resistance. So we can see a clear relationship there. You increase the length of a conductor, you increase its resistance. Let's move on to the next stage of our experiment. And what we're going to do now is we're going to join the other ends of this cable together. So now let's measure the resistance of the conductors as we've joined them together. So for this part, what I'm going to need to do is just change my probes over. So instead of using the crock clips, we're going to be using the probes now. So we'll hook those on there and that's good to go. I am just going to check that this is still reading a zero resistance because often when you change the probes on, a, on leads, it can change it slightly. So you can see it's changed slightly again. So we'll zero those out. So we've got zero ohms again. And now if we measure from one end of the cable to the other, what do you think is going to happen to the resistance? Now, if we go back to our original value, 1.78 ohms, let's just think about that and see what value we get here. So we're measuring from one end of the cable to the other, and we're getting 0.9 ohms, 0.9 ohms. So what's happened now is that the resistance of the conductor, the resistance of this cable has now decreased. Okay, so this cable has decreased. Now the reason for that is that in joining these two conductors together here, what I've done is I've taken my original one millimeter cross-sectional area uh, conductor and I have doubled its cross-sectional area. So it's no longer one millimeter squared, it's now two millimeters squared because we've joined those together. So what we've done by connecting those two together, we've created a two millimeter squared cross-sectional area cable. And what's happened to the resistance? It's gone from 1.78, and it might be a little bit clearer if we point out that that might easily be translated as 1.8 ohms. We can see that we've halved the resistance. So half of 1.78 is 0.89, and actually that's come out really nicely now, giving us the exact right value. So by doubling the cross-sectional area, we have halved the resistance of that conductor. So in this video, we looked at changing two factors relating to the cable and how that affected resistance. So let's just summarize that and make sure we've got those main points really nice and clear. So when we increase the length of the conductor, we increased resistance. In fact, we can be even more accurate. We can say that when we doubled the length of the conductor, we doubled the resistance of the conductor. The key expression to remember from this is that resistance and length are directly proportional. If you increase length, you increase resistance. So therefore they are directly proportional. It also works the other way around. If we were to decrease the length of the conductor, we would decrease its resistance. Conversely, when we looked at changing the cross-sectional area of the conductor, we saw a different effect. So when we doubled the cross-sectional area of the conductor, we halved its resistance. So again, a very clear relationship increase cross-sectional area, decrease resistance. They are what we call inversely proportional, inversely proportional. So try and remember those two expressions. Length and resistance are directly proportional. Cross-sectional area and resistance are inversely proportional, key expressions. Two things that we haven't changed in this video at all are the material that the cable is made from. So in this case, the conductor was made from copper. We didn't change that. And the other thing that we didn't change was the temperature of the conductor. So as we said, this came out of the stores. It's an ambient temperature, which gave us a specific value. What we'll do in the next video is have a look at changing the temperature of the conductor and see how that affects resistance. Thank you very much for watching.